All right, we're going to look right now at reciprocal trig ratios. Reciprocal trig ratios are three other ratios. There's actually six trig ratios in total. And if you think about a right triangle, it sort of makes sense. When you first learned about trig, right triangle trig, you likely, if this was an angle theta, and you learned to write the basic three ratios, as in sine, cosine, and tangent, you learned to label the triangle there, opposite, adjacent, down beside the angle, right there, right? And then the hypotenuse, that longest side over here. And you likely learned to write the three ratios based on that. That sine was opposite over hypotenuse, cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent was opposite over adjacent. Now, there's three pairs of sides, and that's why there's three basic trig ratios. There's opposite and hypotenuse, that's the first pair you can make, and that's sine, obviously. There's adjacent and hypotenuse, that's the second pair you can make, and that's cosine. And then there's opposite and adjacent. And that's the third pair you can make, and that's tangent. But there would be actually two ways you could write these, because, of course, you could write them as, you know, instead of writing opposite over hypotenuse, you could write hypotenuse over opposite. Or you could write, instead of cosine here, you could write hypotenuse over adjacent. And instead of this, you could write it's reciprocal adjacent over opposite. Now these three ratios are just the reciprocals of these three ratios, and they each have a name, and those names are cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, cosecant written up there, and secant, the reciprocal of cosine, secant, and then lastly here, cotangent up there is the reciprocal of tangent. Now those three are the reciprocals, whether you're using right triangle trigonometry or circular trigonometry, angles in standard position, same thing. Those are reciprocals, those are reciprocals, and those are reciprocals. If you know one, you know the other. All right, so let's look at some of that right now. Let's draw a right triangle and write some of the ratios here. Let's draw two of the legs here. And then let's draw the hypotenuse. Let's look at this angle here. Let's call that theta. Let's say this was 5 and this was 8 and we wanted to write some of the trig ratios. Easiest two to write with just those two sides would be tangent because we have the opposite and the adjacent. Tangent of that angle would be opposite over adjacent, so 5 over 8. All that means is even without looking at the triangle, cotangent would be 8 over 5. All right, 5 over 8, 8 over 5, reciprocals. If we want the other four trig ratios, we need to find this hypotenuse here. And we can do that pretty easily by knowing that it's going to be the square root of 8 squared plus 5 squared. So in other words, the square root of 64 plus 25, or square root of 89. Let's just leave it like that so we don't have to fiddle around with our calculator. Except I should write the right number there, 89. So if we want to write the other four ratios here, sine theta is our opposite, 5 over root 89. We could rationalize that, but I'm not going to right now because we want to compare it here pretty quickly with this. If our sine is 5 over root 89, cosecant is just root 89 over 5. All right? If we want to write our cosine, cosine is adjacent, 8 over root 89. So our secant is just root 89 over 8. It's reciprocal, right? So you got those pairs. You have to find ways to remember them. People seem to, or my students anyway, uh, I'm sure they're no different than other students, look for ways to connect these things. You're going to have to look for ways to try and connect with which one's which. It would be really nice if they all worked this way, that you had tangent and its reciprocal was cotangent. But it doesn't work that way. Sine goes with cosecant. <laughs> and cosine goes with secant. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that nicely, but 
I'm sure you'll uh, find a way to remember that. All right. Now, the other thing we should look at here is how we can work with these three ratios using a calculator. Let's say we wanted to know the value of cosecant of 2.1, for example. Now, that's not a special angle. We don't know the coordinates of a point or something else where, that we can use here. So we're going to have to use our calculator. The thing to realize on most calculators, though, get our calculator back here, is most calculators only have buttons for the primary three trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, don't have those reciprocals because you don't really need them if you know that they're reciprocals. If we happen to know the value of the sine of something, it happens to be a fraction, A over B, then we can write the cosecant as B over A, just flip the fraction over. If we don't know it as a fraction, we have to think again about what reciprocals are. If we know that the sine of something was 0.7, then its reciprocal is just going to be 1 over 0.7. So if we can look at what the sine of this angle is, the value of this is going to be whatever 1 over the sine of 2.1 is. All right? We find the sine ratio and then do its reciprocal, 1 divided by that. So you can do that in two steps on your calculator or just one single step here. So in two steps, we could say, you know, figure out what sine of 2.1 is, and then, and then do 1 divided by that answer. And it gives us that. So our cosecant ratio is 1.16, roughly, if we're going to two decimal places. Or, of course, we could just do it all in one step by going 1 over sine 2.1. And there you go. All right. So this is roughly 1.16. Now notice that we flipped the ratio over. We did the reciprocal of the ratio. We did 1 over sine of 2.21. What we didn't do, this is wrong, what I'm about to write, is sine of 1 over 2.1. Okay, it's not that. You don't flip the angle over. It's the reciprocal of the ratio. All right? Very important to know. Let's look at one more here. Let's say we wanted to know the cotangent of 3 pi over 11. Now, this one ends up tricking people just because this angle is given as a fraction and it seems really tempting to want to flip that over. But as we saw up here, you don't flip the angle over. All right, so this is not tangent of 11 over 3 pi. Important to realize up front, it's not that. What it is is it's the reciprocal. This is going to be 1 over whatever tangent of 3 pi over 11 is. You don't flip the angle over. The angle is 3 pi over 11, stays 3 pi over 11. We can go to our calculator, and that'll give us a number. All right, so let's get the calculator. And let's do this in two steps so we can see what the tangent is. Tangent of 3 pi divided by 11 gives us that. All right, so that value is 1.15, pretty close to the thing we got before. But now we want 1 divided by that, our answer. So that means that cotangent is, if we're doing two decimal places, roughly 0.87. All right. Now, incidentally, while that's an exact value, this is not a special angle. And that's why we used our calculator here. If you were looking for reciprocal trig ratios for special angles, just the same as the primary three trig ratios, you'd use some of those special triangles. But I think that's something to be tackled another time. All right, so that's it. That's a really brief introduction to what reciprocal trig ratios are, how they're related to the basic primary three trig ratios.